Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, over the past several weeks we have been focusing in on the miracles of Jesus Christ. That as he lived here on this earth, he had power over creation, power over illness, power over evil, even power over death. Because as Jesus was doing these miracles, he was showing a glimpse of heaven. Because as he began his ministry, he said, the kingdom of God has come. And as he did these miracles, he showed who he was, the Son of God. And he also showed what was coming. Because in heaven, there will be no more natural disasters. There will be no more illness. There will be no more evil. There will be no more death. Because there will be no more sin. Jesus is the one who has power over everything. But as we've been looking at the various miracles, we've also been taking a, a glance at the things that are behind the miracle. The message that's behind the miracle. And today's message is the message of belief versus doubt. Jesus said, everything is possible for the one who believes. And the father in the story says, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. Help me in my doubt. Do you ever doubt? <coughs> Comes to your relationship with the Lord, do you ever doubt? Does that ever sometimes feel like Lord, you said you're with me always, but it doesn't feel like it. Do you ever doubt the presence of the Lord? Do you ever doubt, Lord, do you, do you really love me? Do you ever wonder, Lord, do you really care? Do you ever doubt His promises? Do you ever doubt, can I really get through this? Are you really going to get me through this, Lord? We do, don't we? I do. The best of Christians doubt. Christians doubt. There's doubt. And you know what? When we doubt, Satan absolutely loves it. Because that's what he wants. He wants us to question God. He wants us to doubt God. He wants us to lose our trust in God. Because the more we doubt, and the more we struggle with doubt, the more we sink into hopelessness. And that's what he wants. He wants us to feel like there's no hope. That not even Jesus can do anything. That's what he wants us to believe. That's what Satan wants us to believe. And he loves it when we doubt. Doubt is real. We have it. It's a temptation. It's something we struggle with. As a people of God, as we continue to live in a world that does have natural disasters and evil and all the other things that go on, sickness and all that, and the Lord seeks to strengthen us as we go through that. In this miracle account, it's important to recognize what happens just before it and what happens right after it. That wasn't read this morning. What happens just before it is Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, three of the disciples. On the Mount of Transfiguration, they see Jesus in all of his glory. They see heaven. And they're like, let's build tents and let's stay here forever. This is great. That's what happens just before this. What happens after, while they're in the house, while the disciples are asking them, Lord, how come you couldn't cast out the demon? Right after Jesus said he needed to be in prayer, right after he says that, then he gives his second passion prediction. For the second time, he very clearly says to them, we're going to Jerusalem, and when we get to Jerusalem, I'm going to be crucified. And on the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. It's the second time he very clearly makes that point to what happens. And so this story comes in between the transfiguration and his second prediction of his death and resurrection. And what's happening in the story and what's going on is the disciples are struggling with 
their spirituality. They're struggling with their faith. And not just the twelve, but all the followers of Jesus, and especially the Father, who comes with His Son. And what we also see in the midst of this struggle, we see the absolute and the complete faithfulness of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, Peter, James, and John come down from the Mount of Transfiguration as they approach the nine disciples that are down below. <clears throat> Excuse me. They come upon a crowd that's arguing. And Jesus says, what are you arguing about? And the Father steps forward and says, I brought my son to you. You can almost sense in there the brought my son to you and you weren't here. I brought my son to you and, and he has this evil spirit that causes him to go into convulsion and, and that tries to kill him. And your disciples said that they could take care of it, that they could cast him out, but they can't. And Jesus says, you unbelieving generation, how long do I have to stay with you? How long will I put up with you? The surprising thing is that most of the miracles we've been addressing and talking about, Jesus gets frustrated with the Pharisees, he gets frustrated with the scribes, the teachers of the law. These words are directed to the disciples. He's frustrated with them. And he equates them with the unbelieving generation. Because he had given them the power to cast out demons and to heal people. And they had done it before. He sent them out in twos and they went out. And he empowered them, enabled them as they met up with people who were ill, who were at demons, to heal them and to cast them out. They came back from that and they went, wow, this was incredible. But now they couldn't, they couldn't do it. How could they couldn't do it? Well, if we jump to the end, Jesus says, because this takes forever. What had happened with the disciples is rather than looking to the Lord for His strength, looking to the Lord for His power in order to do what the Lord had said that they could do, instead they were looking to themselves. Hey, we did this before. Can do this. You can almost imagine the scene. Here's this, this man with his son, and he's bringing it, and each disciple stepping up one at a time. Come out. And the next one going, here, I can do it. And one after another, they're stepping up, and, and, and nothing's happening. And then the teachers of the law that are there are probably laughing at him, going, ha! And all the while, the father's watching this take place. And the disciples are not able to do it because they're looking to themselves and not going to the Lord in prayer and looking for the Lord to do it. So then Jesus says, bring the boy here. And he's brought forward and as the Spirit sees Jesus, the boy goes into a convulsion and is foaming at the mouth. Exactly what the Father has said, this is what's happening. And then we hear the compassion and the love of Christ as he looks to the Father and he says, how long has this been going on? Since he was a child, the Father says. Since he was a child. And sometimes it throws him in the water and tries to drown him. And sometimes it throws him into the fire. And he says, and if you can, please help us. And Jesus repeats, if you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. This man is going down farther and farther in his doubt and hopelessness. Can you imagine? For years, he's pulling his son out of the water. For years, he's pulling his son out of the fire. 
For years, he's going through this, and he has hope, and he comes to Jesus, and then he watches the disciples, and, are, and they can't do anything, and then they're arguing, to the point where when Jesus arrives, the man says, yes, you can. I don't even know if Jesus can do it. And Jesus says, everything's possible. For the one who believes. Jesus said, if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, the smallest seed, you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea, and I'll do it. Any faith. That's sometimes what we think about the mustard seed story. Well, as long as I got tiny faith. No, Jesus is not talking about tiny faith. Yeah, it doesn't... All we have to have is just a little faith to believe in Jesus, but, but to, to grow in our trust, that's what Jesus is talking about. Is a tiny little mustard seed grows into a great big huge plant. And the birds come and they find the protection in that plant. And that's what Jesus is saying, is that our faith is to be a faith that grows. And it grows big. And the only way it can grow is not by looking into ourselves, Looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus. It's the only way our, our faith can grow is, is looking to Jesus and what he has done. That's why at the end of this story, Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to rise again on the third day. Because this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to do for all. Because it's Jesus who makes everything possible. Because the power and the love of Christ never changes. It's also awesome change. It's not the power and the love of Christ. He's all powerful and he always loves us. That never changes. Trust. We gotta look to Christ. We gotta cling to Him. We gotta cling to the cross. We gotta look to Christ. We gotta be in His Word and hear His promises. We gotta come to the sacrament like we did today and receive Him as He comes to us because He desires for us to grow in our trust and our confidence in Him. That when the doubt comes, when we doubt whether he's, pre whether he's present in our lives or not, we look at the cross. We look at the empty tomb. When we doubt, does he love me? We look at the cross. Yes, he loves us. We look at the empty tomb. Yes, he loves us. When we look at, is he going to keep his promises? We look to the cross. This is the God who keeps his promises. And he loves us. And he cares for us. And he is with us. No matter what is going on. Now everything is possible. Does that mean that we can, uh, whatever we want, Lord, here's what I want. No. Because that's not love. Love doesn't give us everything we want, but love makes sure we have everything we need. A loving parent does not give their child everything they want. A loving parent gives their child and will do anything to make sure, sure their child has everything they need. That's the father bringing his son to Jesus. He needs Jesus. And our Lord Jesus, I know he doesn't give us everything we want, but he went to the cross to give us everything we need. To give us everything we need. 
And as we go through this life, as we live this life, yeah, we have doubts. And we struggle with doubt. And we're tempted. And our attitude changes. But the power <coughs> and the love of Christ never changes. So when you doubt, when I doubt, when we doubt, we have to cling to the cross. Cling to the promises of Christ. Hear Him in His words speak to us. And in the midst of our doubt, hear Him say, hear Him say to you, I am with you. You hold on to the cross and look into the empty tomb and know that you have a, a living Savior who can do anything, who has all the power and all the love, and hear Him say to you, yes, I love you. Hear Him say to you, yes, I care for you. Hear Him say to you, yes, I will keep my promises. And hear Him say to you, no matter what it is, I'll get you through it. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.